made it so that other animals could become the more dominant creatures. Now mammals were running around when the dinosaurs were about. They tended to be kind of small. But after the dinosaur's extinction, mammals began to explode in size. Welcome to Nature Explorers, where we normally talk about animals that are alive and on the earth today. But instead, today what we're going to do is we're going to go back in time. I borrowed a time machine, it's bigger than it looks, and we're going to go back way back to prehistoric times to see some of the animals that would have been alive back then. Last time we met, we talked about plesiosaurs, the swimming reptiles of the prehistoric times. This time, we're on the hunt for some of the largest mammals that ever lived on the Earth, the megafauna. At this point, I should ask that you please keep all hands and items inside the time machine while we're traveling. Thank you! While the megafauna that we're looking for today lived in prehistoric times, there are still megafauna on the earth today. So what is a megafauna? Well, the first part, mega, is a word we're probably familiar with. It means large, really, really large. So because of this, we know whatever a megafauna is, it must be big. The next part of the word, fauna, is a little bit harder. But if we think about it, Fauna kind of sounds a bit like a word that we know. Do you know what this is? That's right. This is a baby deer. And the word for a baby deer is a fawn. Fauna sounds like fawn. And fawns are baby deer. And deer are animals. Fauna is the scientific word for an animal. So, a megafauna is a big animal. Creatures like elephants, lions, whales, and bears are all currently living megafauna. In fact, you're a megafauna, or at least you will be when you grow up. Megafaunas are defined as animals that weigh at least as much as a full-grown human. So now that we know what megafaunas are, let's see if we can track down some prehistoric ones. The extinction of the dinosaurs happened around 65 million years ago. And their extinction, removal from the Earth, made it so that other animals could become the more dominant creatures. Now, mammals were running around when the dinosaurs were about. They tended to be kind of small. But after the dinosaurs' extinction, mammals began to explode in size. This growth eventually leveled off around 40 million years ago, meaning the megafauna got as large as they possibly could due to their environment. The Earth was very different from the time of the dinosaurs. The oxygen levels were different, along with the temperature and the types of plants available, all of which meant that it was just not possible for the new megafauna to reach the colossal sizes of the old dinosaurs. Still, these massive mammals were impressive, and many of them resemble animals that we know today. One of the most famous megafauna in history were the mammoths. And most people, when they hear the word mammoth, they think a woolly mammoth. Those big creatures whose bodies were covered in two thick layers of fur. But there were other species of mammoths as well, up to a dozen different types that we are aware of. It's just that the woolly mammoth had the largest range or habitat. It roamed for large, large areas. And because of that, we found a lot more of their fossils than we have of the various other type of mammoths. In general, mammoths stood between 9 to 14 feet at their shoulder and could weigh between 6 to 10 tons. That is 12,000 to 20,000 pounds. They had impressive tusks that stuck out of their mouths. Those are those big teeth coming out of the side. And both male and female mammoths had tusks. The female mammoth's tusks were between 5 to 6 feet in length. That's as long as your parents are tall. But the male mammoths had tusks that were even longer, growing to lengths between 8 to 15 feet. And these massive creatures resembled elephants. That's because mammoths and elephants share a family. And like elephants, these creatures were herbivores, means they were plant eaters. It is believed they may have used their giant tusks to help them clear snow away from the ground so they could find food. 
It is also believed that they ate around 700 pounds of grass and leaves each day. Mammoth fossils have been found in Europe, Asia, and in North America. They were hunted by early humans for food, fur, and for their bones, which were used to build shelters and tools. In fact, the mammoths were so important to our ancient ancestors that mammoths were often painted on cave walls. Unfortunately, this didn't end well for the mammoths. Mammoths went extinct around 10,000 years ago due to a combination of climate change and hunting by humans. But some scientists are trying to bring the woolly mammoth back. They're hoping to use bits of tissue from mammoths that have been found preserved in permafrost to clone new living mammoths. Since mammoths went extinct not too long ago compared to other animals like dinosaurs, and since they're so closely related to modern elephants, we may one day see mammoths walking on the earth again. Now, armadillos are small little creatures, right? Right. The largest, the giant armadillo, can weigh up to 73 pounds and reach lengths of three feet. Meanwhile, the smallest armadillo, the pink fairy armadillo, weighs as little as 4.2 ounces and is only four inches long. Neither one of these is big as a human, and neither one of them are big enough to be counted as a megafauna. But what if I told you there was once a massive armadillo walking the earth? It's true. Meet the Glyptodon. Glyptodons were enormous armored mammals that became extinct around 10,000 years ago. They lived in the swamps of North and South America. These guys were omnivores. That meant they ate a little bit of everything, from plants to insects to scavenging the remains of other animals. They had stubby little legs and large armored backs. Kind of made them look a little bit like a turtle. Glyptodons were roughly the size and weight of a Volkswagen Beetle. That means 10 feet long and weighing around one ton or 2,000 pounds. So when we think about modern armadillos today, we think of them rolling up into a ball to protect themselves. But these big prehistoric ones, they couldn't do that. Instead, they relied on their thick skull armor and sharp spikes for defense. Scientists believe these creatures went extinct due to climate change and due to hunting by early humans who wanted their meat and also their protective armor to use as shelters and to keep themselves warm. The largest mammal to ever walk the earth was not a mammoth. It was the Paraceraherium. Now, not much is known about the Paraceraherium. But we do know they were massive, standing nearly 20 feet tall at the shoulder. It is estimated that they weighed between 15 to 20 tons. That is 30,000 to 40,000 pounds. Unfortunately, since the number of fossils we have about these creatures are so few, it's hard to say what exactly they looked like. But scientists believe they had long muscular necks and had similar to a hornless rhinoceros. Their long necks would have made it easy for these giant herbivores to graze from tall trees. Now we all know what sloths are, right? They're those slow moving cute creatures that live in the trees. In fact, they move so slowly that they rarely come down from those trees. They live a quiet life of sleeping, eating, sleeping, moving to a sunny spot, and sleeping. But before our modern two-toed and three-toed sloths, there was another type of sloth wandering around. That was the giant ground sloth. There were many species of ground sloth, but in general they weighed around 4.5 tons, or 9,000 pounds, and reached lengths of up to 20 feet and stood 12 feet tall at the shoulder. These giants ambled around the woodlands and grasslands of South America, chowing down on grasses, shrubs, and leaves. They preferred to walk on all fours, but they could stand on their hind legs for a short period of time to help them gather food or to ward off enemies. 
When they reared up on their hind legs, the ground sloth could use their muscular tail as a sort of third hind leg to give them extra support. This stopped their large, massively weighted body from falling back onto their backs. While most ground sloths were herbivores who pulled down tree branches with their strong arms to get to the leaves, it's believed that some may have actually burrowed into the ground to find food. Their wide, flattened claws would have made excellent tools for digging up tasty roots and tubers. But on top of this, scientists have found something else that's interesting. Large prehistoric tunnels have been found in Argentina. And the neat thing about these tunnels, fossilized into the rock, are claw marks. And these are big claw marks. And in fact, these claw markings match the claws of certain species of ground sloths, making scientists believe these creatures actually dug the tunnels themselves to create underground homes and passageways. These massive relations to our modern sloths went extinct around 10,000 years ago, likely due to hunting by humans. Now, well, that's all for this trip. I better get this time machine back to its owner. I want to thank you for joining me on our trips through time, and I hope you've had fun learning about the various interesting prehistoric creatures that once roamed this earth. Until next time we meet, stay happy, stay safe, and stay curious. Bye, everyone. <laughs>